everyone, and welcome uh, to the Research and Application Webinar Series. My name is Sam Harlow, and I'm the Online Learning Librarian, as well as the Public Health Education and Kinesiology Librarian for UNCG University Libraries. So we came up with the idea to create a series of webinars for the UNCG community on research and applications. This is the ninth webinar of the series, and welcome. In this series, different librarians will cover topics on UNCG library resources and research tools. These 30-minute webinars will be recorded in WebEx Meeting Center, where we are now, and placed on the library webpage through YouTube, where they will be closed captions and not have participant data available for the public. So I'm going to put um, that page in the chat now for you all to have. Um, so that page will also contain other applicable links and presentation materials. So I'm going to cover some logistical things really quickly before we get started. Um, so please mute your audio during the presentation by clicking the audio icon next to your name to turn it red. But feel free to turn your audio back on um, by clicking the audio icon again at the end of the webinar to participate in a conversation with the presenters. If you do not have a microphone, you are also welcome to participate in the chat. If you have questions throughout the webinar, please put them in chat and I will track the questions um, for the presenters. So I'm about to put my um, phone number and email address in here in case there are any technical issues. Feel free to email me or call me. I'll have my email open during the presentation. So before I get started introducing this session, are there any questions? Okay. So this session is on NC Docs and scholarly communication and is being presented by Anna Kraft, our Coordinator of Metadata Services, and Tiffany Henry, our Discovery Cataloger. This online session will provide an overview of the UNCG University Library's open access initiatives and related services that can help extend the reach and impact of your scholarships. So topics will include open access scholarship, NC Docs, open access publishing fund, and the open um, journal system. So, without further ado, I am going to pass it to Anna and Tiffany. So, you guys can start now. All right. Thank you, Sam. Hi, everybody. I'm Anna Kraft. Um, we're glad that y'all joined us today, and I'm here with my colleague. Oh, hello. I'm Tiffany Henry, and Sam mentioned I'm the Discovery Cataloger here at Jessen Library. And if y'all have any trouble hearing us, uh, definitely write in the chat or speak up um, and let us know. So we're going to get started. I will hand this over to Tiffany. Thank you. So here's our agenda for this webinar. First, we'll go over a brief definition of open access. Then we'll cover several of the services that we offer here, the university library that focus on providing open access materials to our users. This includes NC Docs, our institutional repository, research data support, our open access publishing fund, open journal systems, support for OER textbook creation, and finally, our new STAR initi STARS initiative. Before delving into the services offered by the libraries, here's a brief working definition of open access. As shown here, open access is providing unrestricted electronic access to scholarly research, which includes peer-reviewed works. And we'll touch on some of the benefits of this as we go through the presentation. One excellent tool that one excellent tool and service that we provide to facilitate open access scholars work is NC Docs. NC Docs is UNCG's open access institutional repository. It has been around since 2007 and currently includes around 10,000 faculty publications and student works. Approximately 60% of, of current UNCG faculty members have a profile with at least one publication attached. Here are some of the larger overarching goals for NC Docs. One goal is to help promote all the wonderful work that UNCG faculty and students do. With the institutional repository, we want to help researchers by providing a space to showcase their scholarship and make it as easy as possible by handling the details like copyright permissions, uploading content, and maintenance. Another goal is to raise awareness around the issue of open access on campus by offering these services to the academic community here. Having an open access institutional repository here at UNCG gives the university libraries a chance to provide all the wonderful benefits that come with open access in a research ecosystem that frequently places scholarship behind an expensive paywall. 
Open access can function as an equalizer of sorts that lets anyone view scholarship regardless of who they are. We can also help authors better understand the rights they retain once they publish in a journal and for self-archiving their scholarship. We are more than happy to answer questions regarding your scholarship and copyright. And finally, NCDOS can help with the filling funding agency mandates by providing a place to house publicly funded research. NCDOS is one of, the, one of many repositories that can be used to share open access scholarship. Unlike other commercial repositories, NCDOS is hosted and managed on this campus. The university libraries are committed to being stewards of the scholarly output of this campus, making sure that the files are migrated to new formats as needed in the future. And as mentioned earlier, we're committed to helping faculty members fulfill public access requirements set by fund granting and funding agencies. I also want to mention that NC.Profiles can provide download counts for works that have been added to the repository. This metric can be helpful for researchers to gauge the visibility of their research and useful for faculty reappointment and tenure portfolios. Here's a screenshot and link to UCG's NCDOC's homepage. At the very top are tabs that will allow users to view the repositories of our partner schools. UNCG is one of the founding members of NCDOC's partner group. Since the infrastructure for the institutional repository is housed here in CG, we take a leadership role in the partners group. And because we have the technical support available here, we can also provide this service to other UNC system schools, saving us all the expense of finding and implementing a pricey commercial institutional repository. Including UNCG, there are currently 11 universities that participate in NCDOCs. Each school has a similar landing page with some branding. Below the search bar and further down the home page is a list highlighting some of the most recent addition to NC Docs. And to the right is a space that will display a featured piece of scholarship that rotates regularly. We can provide personalized research profiles for faculty members. In addition to showcasing their scholarly work, faculty members can send us extra information to complete their profiles. Here we have a screenshot of Dr. Burr's profile, a faculty member from the LIS department here on campus. On her profile, she has a photograph, rank and position, contact information, a link to her departmental page, plus a brief background and research summary. Another benefit to using NC Docs is the visibility provided by being indexed by Google. As shown on by the screenshot here, items in NC Docs rank rank well in Google searches, plus a significant portion of NC Docs online traffic comes from Google searches. Users searching on the Open Web for a specific topic or researcher are likely to find works or profiles that are in NC Docs. One great illustration of the increased visibility that NC Docs can provide for researchers comes from Dr. Silva's profile. Paul Sylvia from the psychology department is an active researcher and prolific writer with well over 100 publications on his profile. As you can see, one of his publications has over 37,000 downloads. NCDOS can handle a variety of media formats. Text-based works such as journal articles are the most common. NCDOS can also adjust image-based works like presentation slides plus, and posters, plus a variety of multimedia files. If you're unsure if a certain file type or media type can be added to NC Docs, please feel free to ask us. And now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Anna. All right, thank you. So why would you want to use NC Docs versus other repositories that are out there? Some faculty members like to use academia.edu and ResearchGate, and I'm not here to tell you not to use these repositories, but I do want to illustrate some of the differences. So open access repositories like NC Docs support export or harvesting of data, making sure that your search results, or your, your scholarship shows up in things like Google searches. We also support long-term preservation of the works, as Tiffany mentioned earlier. Our business model is nonprofit, unlike academia.edu and ResearchGate, which are commercial services. Uh, we're not gonna try to send you lots of emails by default, and we're not gonna ask for your address book. So we are here to make your scholarship more visible, more discoverable. We're not here to make money off of you or your data. 
And that's the difference. That's, those are some of the differences between us and services like academia.edu and ResearchGate. And we really do want to help showcase the scholarship that's coming out of UNCG. This is an example I like to share. Uh, last year, uh, one of the liaison librarians, a colleague here, emailed me or actually called on a Monday and said, I've got a student in my office. He's got some scholarship that is going to be profiled on the UNCG webpage two days from now, and he needs a professional permanent location for those scholarly works to live so that they can be linked from that news story. Oh, and also he's leaving tomorrow to go back home to Turkey. And she wasn't sure if NC Docs was the right place, but it turned out that it was. It was student scholarship that had come out of the university, um, and the student had also worked with a faculty member. So we made sure that the copyright situation was, um, that we could get copyright clearance for those materials. And we were able to get him a profile and get his works loaded quickly into NC Docs. So that when that news story went live on Wednesday, there were links from the story directly to his profile and publications in NC Docs. So that's the sort of thing that we would love to help out with more. If you or your colleagues or your students are going to have research or scholarship showcased in the news through UNCG or through other outlets, and you'd like to make that scholarship available to the public, that's something that we can most likely help with. So definitely get in touch. So how do you participate? We have a general email address, ncdocs at uncg.edu. You can also email Tiffany and I directly. Our contact information will be at the end of the presentation. We try to make this as easy as possible. So you can send materials directly, whether they be articles, PowerPoint slides, whatever they are, or you can send us your CV. And we would check the publications on your CV, see if we could get copies of them, see if we could also get copyright clearance to add them to the database. Uh, we would take care of checking on that. We also take care of uploading the materials into the database. And we can't necessarily add everything. We can only upload, upload the materials for which we could receive copyright clearance from the publishers. So if you are publishing in journals that have uh, strict permissions around this or strict um, restrictions around this, we may not be able to add everything. But we would uh, let you know what we're able to do, give you an update after we've checked your CV. And um, so again, we try to make this easy for faculty who want to add materials. Students can also participate, as I just mentioned. So if a student is publishing or presenting traditional peer-reviewed scholarship, things that are going in journals, things that have been accepted at professional conferences. In that case, the process is the same as for faculty. They just need to contact us. For course scholarship, things like class papers, students would need a faculty sponsor. We don't want to just add student works willy-nilly that have not gone through some level of peer review. So if there's a faculty member who thinks that a student paper is of particular note, um, that's something that they could uh, sponsor into the database. Things like electronic theses and dissertations that are coming out of graduate programs are added automatically. And some of the other capstone works, like honors papers, they also have the option to add those materials. And if there are questions about formats or types of scholarship, definitely get in touch. We love to answer questions about those. But what about research data? So we also offer data management planning resources to help you if you are writing a data management plan, uh, if you're starting out on your research. And we also offer research data hosting and archiving through a partnership with the Odom Dataverse at UNC Chapel Hill. That's not the only option out there for hosting and sharing data sets. Um, we can offer consultations around finding a good solution for you. And there's more information at the LibGuide um, for research data management. We also offer an open access publishing fund. So these are grants of up to $1,000 per article to offset the cost of publishing in an open access journal. The limit is one award per fiscal year per author. 
And there is information on a LibGuide. We can share that link um, with the slides after the session. Um, who is eligible for this? Full-time faculty, full-time EPA employees, and enrolled graduate students are all eligible for this. And if you need help determining the legitimacy of an open access journal, we can help with that. There are predatory open access journals out there that um, try to solicit scholarship and ask authors to pay an article processing charge or APC, um, but don't provide any of those services that a legitimate journal would provide, like peer review, copy editing, proofreading, layout, things like that. So if you have been contacted by a journal that you're not sure about, or if you are looking at a journal online and you're not sure about the legitimacy of it, that's something that we can help with. Another service that we offer is Open Journal Systems. So this is an open source software which is designed to assist in the publication of peer-reviewed open access journals. We currently host 12 active journals, and there are a wide variety of topics for those. Um, you can see them on this list, from archives to communications, well, communication centers, musicology, learning spaces, math and statistics, lots of different topics. And not all of these, uh, well, some of them are being published focusing on student scholarship coming out of UNCG. Others are being focused on different scholarly areas and have contributors from across the country and around the world. So it's not necessarily UNCG scholarship that's being published in these, but there is always at least one UNCG person who is on the board or something like that involved in the, in the journal. So here's an example of what an article looks like from one of our hosted journals in a little screenshot. So they're generally published as open access PDFs. Anyone who has an internet connection would be able to read and download this article. These journals are highly visible on the web. Um, they come up highly in Google results and also in the library catalog. So what's the difference between NC Docs and OJS, or Open Journal Systems? So NC Docs, which Tiffany talked about earlier, is an open access database of scholarship that's produced by UNCG personnel, faculty, students, staff, and it includes those researcher profiles, of which we saw an example, a couple examples earlier. OJS is, again, we've got that open access piece, but it's a publication platform for creating journals that share scholarship from researchers around the world. So there are UNCG people involved in the creation of the journals, but it's not necessarily UNCG-based scholarship that's being published. So if you would like a vehicle to share your own scholarship, then it's probably NC Docs that you're looking for. And if you are interested in creating or working with others to create a journal or um, conference proceedings or something like that, open journal systems might be um, the ticket for your interest. I also want to mention some mini grants we offer to support open educational resources. So these are grants of $1,000 to support the identification and or implementation of OERs, Open Educational Resources, in order to lower the cost of textbooks for your students. The next application cycle starts in early uh, 2019, and there is more information on our website. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely um, check that out. That's a, a big area for us and for students on this campus who really appreciate and need um, lower cost textbook options. And I also want to mention STARS. This is a very new initiative here. It stands for Scholarship, Technology, and Research Services. And this is really focused on technology-enabled research and scholarship. Our new website, libresearch.uncg.edu, has just recently gone live. Um, but what is this? What do we offer? So we want to support faculty and students in creating digital collections that relate to their research, designing things like digital humanities projects, helping with data management and data workflow planning, and by advising on data archiving and development for metadata that's needed for projects, and supporting and advising on open access publishing. 
We also intend to offer some additional services in the future when we have some more staffing um, in place visualizations of research on inter interactive platforms, and also geospatial data support. So mapping, things like that. Um, so this is very new, but we are excited to continue to work. We've been doing these, these sorts of projects on a sort of project by project basis, and we're hoping to um, more institutionalize this work with this new initiative. So we have some upcoming workshops. There's one about personal digital archiving, one about text mining, and one about best practices for research, uh, research data management and research management. Um, other workshops are available by request. So that, again, the libresearch.uncg.edu, there's a, a, a site or link there where you can request a workshop and also request a consultation. So here are those links. Um, if you're interested in talking more about a project or a potential workshop. We would love to set up consultations on these, these areas to find out what type of scholarship um, you're working on and if there are ways that we might help support it. So that's STARS. So a brief, brief recap. Today we talked about NC Docs for sharing your scholarship, research data management for helping with data management plans, and archiving and sharing data, our open access publishing fund for offsetting the cost of publishing in open access journals, open journal systems for creating and sharing new open access journals, our mini grants for open educational resources, and our scholarship technology and research services initiative. And here are links for all of those. Um, and I believe that that is all that we have today. Yeah. So um, that was a brief run through of many of the things that we can offer to support your scholarship. Here's our contact information. And if y'all have questions about any of these things, we would be glad to take them now. Thanks to Sam for sharing those links. You're welcome. I missed some, so I threw the ones that I missed. Um, and <laughs> I think all the other links you had um, are in the chat. And um, we'll put this um, PowerPoint, Anna, if you don't mind, on our on our web guide. Yeah, absolutely. We will send it to you. So yeah, so um, Jennifer and Maria, do you guys have any questions? So Maria said, um, okay. no questions. Yeah, good question. Um, you can do either. So it's slightly easier if you send articles because that way we have the article directly um, and would just be able to go directly to checking the copyright publisher permissions. But if you don't have copies of all your articles, it's fine to send a CV. We're going to have to check the publisher permissions regardless. Um, but sending articles is helpful because that way, if it's an article that somehow we are not able to get a copy of, um, that way we, we definitely have it. Um, but you can do either. So feel free to send articles and a CV if, that, um, if that's the easiest thing. Yes, yeah, thank you for the question. We would be delighted to create a profile for you or update one if you already have one. So open educational resources, these are, yeah, I didn't spend much time talking about them, but it's a really a growing area for us on campus. And these are things like, they can be as simple as books that the library has already um, purchased that have unlimited um, online, so electronic books that have unlimited online user access and that are in your, um, area. So we can help you identify resources that the library already owns that would be low cost or actually free for your students. Or we can help you find resources that have been created, high quality, open access, free resources that have been created by others that might be in an open access database out in, um, in the wider world. So there's some great repositories out there that focus on free high quality 
scholarly works to support teaching. Um, they come in the forms of textbooks, sometimes syllabi, other course materials. Um, it's really a growing area both at UNCG and the public university system in general, where people are trying to implement materials that are either lower cost or free for their students, so they're not having to pay for, um, you know, three, four, five hundred dollar textbooks in some cases for some um, some areas of scholarship. So the mini grants are designed to help you take time to find those resources in working with a librarian um, and also to implement them in your courses. So to redesign a course around those resources. Um, we have also supported and while well, are supporting right now uh, three different UNCG faculty members who are actually writing open textbooks. So they, um, these three faculty members have grants through a program that we just started with the Open Textbook Network where they have identified courses that they think need a, a textbook out that uh, can be provided, they could write and provide for free. So there's some money that is going to those faculty members to support that work, but the end result is going to be textbooks that are going to be able to be used freely in their classes and by classes all over the country and the world. So it's definitely a big area in higher education. And my colleague, Beth Bernhardt, is um, very active in that area. So if it's something that you want to learn more about, she is the best contact for that right now. Um, yeah, thank you, Sam, for sharing some information about that. Yeah, I did, I did just want to note, because I just went to the workshop, that um, if you're gung-ho about doing this before we do our next round of the mini-grants, there is an initiative right now through NC Live, yeah. which I threw into the chat, and there is a difference. At um, UNCG, we do allow you um, to use non-OER materials, so like if you just wanted to get rid of a textbook and adapt um, a library streaming film, even if it's not completely open, um, we allow for this. The, yeah. For our grants, for the um, NC Live one, you would have to adopt a completely um, OER open um, resource. So that's the difference. If you're interested, probably a good contact too would be, besides Beth, is your liaison. Um, and there are some workshops coming up if you're really into um, going to the NC Live route, which is, is both are money <laughs> for yeah. you, yeah. either one. Great, thank you. Yeah, thanks for that additional information. I actually was not clear on the difference between what we're offering and what NC Live is offering, so that's good to know. Um, you both have money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, so um, both UNCG, NC Live, others around the state really want to help faculty implement, find and implement these resources for their students. Any other questions while we're here? So yeah, just before you two leave, um, we will be putting the recording into that first um, lib guide I put in there, but I'll put it in there again because we've thrown a lot of links at you today. And I'll try to update this um, guide to include some of the links that um, Anna put in there as well. Um, about um, NC Docs, open access journals, um, and all of it. So um, let, definitely let us know if you have questions. There's Anna and Tiffany's email address, and um, you're welcome to email me as well, and I can um, get you to them. But uh, I hope everyone has a great day. Stay safe and dry. Yes, yes. Thank you, Sam. We got this in before <laughs> the hurricane. So. Yes. Great. So um, if there's not any more questions, I'm going to end the meeting. All right. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions, Anna and Tiffany? Uh, do you want us to send you the slides via email? Sure. Yeah, that would work. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you again, Sam. And thank you, Jennifer and Maria. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, thank you guys. All right. Take care, y'all. Bye. Bye.